Congratulations to you both on your nomination. Uh, Judge, is it Judge Brown Jackson or Judge Jackson? Jackson, please, thank you. Judge Jackson. Um, in your uh, career before you were a judge, have you ever represented a terrorist at Guantanamo Bay? Uh, about 16 years ago when I was a federal public defender. Okay, and was that case assigned to you as a federal public defender? It was. Who was the uh, client that you had? Oh, Senator, I don't remember the name. Okay, could we get that for the record, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jackson Akumi? Jackson Akumi. Akumi. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to make sure I get it right. Uh, in your legal uh, career, have you ever represented a terrorist at Guantanamo Bay? No, Senator. Thank you. Um, I want to speak about race discrimination in the Constitution. Ms. Jackson Akumi, does the Constitution allow the government to treat Americans differently because of their race? No, Senator. Thank you. I'm glad that we agree on that. Uh, Judge Jackson? Can I get your hand? No, Senator. Thank you. Uh, let's turn to religious liberty, uh, if we can. Uh, the First Amendment protects the freedom of religion. Uh, this also means the government can't institute blanket policies that treat religious organizations, such as churches, worse than they treat secular organizations, such as restaurants or clubs or casinos. Is that right, Ms. Jackson Akumi? Uh, Senator, the the uh, First Amendment protects religious liberty, religious freedom, exercise of religion, and uh, those, all of those issues are being actively litigated right now, including at the Supreme Court. But, but the government can't treat a religious organization worse than they would a secular business, like a restaurant or a casino. Is that correct? Senator, you're referring to the principle about neutral laws and uh, that um, th there is a principle there that if a law is neutral as to everyone, a religious organization can be included. And uh, that th it's my view that the Supreme Court is testing the areas of that. For example, the Supreme Court recently granted an injunction uh, out of California that involved one of those issues. So I just wanted to be sure to reflect the nuance there, Senator, and the fact that the Supreme Court is working through those issues. And I'll also add that uh, First Amendment litigation has not been my area of practice uh, the last 10 years or even uh, 16 years. But that's my broad understanding of what's happening with the clause right now at the Supreme Court. Thank you. Judge Jackson? Yes, Senator. Um, I, too, have not had many cases involving relig religious liberty issues. I have one right now that um, might involve some of these issues, but I am aware that the Supreme Court uh, has uh, rightly um, viewed the First Amendment right to religious liberty as foundational, fundamental. Uh, it's in the First Amendment, and uh, the Supreme Court is working through the doctrine. There have been a, a series of cases in the last few years uh, as the court determines uh, what it means to uh, treat religious organizations differently. Thank you. Uh, let's turn to the Second Amendment, Ms. Jackson Akumi. Uh, do you believe the Second Amendment protects an individual's right to keep and bear arms for self defense? Senator, the Supreme Court has said that very clearly. That was Justice Scalia writing in Heller uh, that the Supreme Court protects an individual right to uh, keep and bear arms. Uh, which has been extended to the state and local governments through McDonald, correct? That's correct, Senator. Okay. What do you believe are the limits on that right? Well, that's the very thing that circuit courts across this country and the Supreme Court are figuring out right now. Have you, do you have any personal views on that? Have you? Well, if I had any personal views, they certainly wouldn't be uh, relevant to decision making that I would engage in as a circuit judge if confirmed. I would be bound by the Supreme Court's precedent in Heller, in McDonald, and any of its progeny that develops. Okay, Judge Jackson? I agree wholeheartedly with what Ms. Jackson Acumi said. Um, any personal views regarding uh, the, the fundamental right to bear arms um, would have no bearing on my decision making concerning those issues, and I would be bound by the Supreme Court's and the DC Circuit's precedents concerning the issue. In Heller and McDonald? In Heller and McDonald. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jackson Akumi, do you agree with Justice Stephen Breyer and the late Justice Ginsburg that the Supreme Court should have 
nine justices and justices should not be added? Well, Senator, I will have to admit that I'm not familiar with their particular views on that issue. And uh, I don't think it would be appropriate, as I indicated in a question from your colleague, for me to opine upon the composition of the Supreme Court or what should or shouldn't happen. It is a question uh, that, that this body must sort through. Uh, it's a question left to the legislative branch and the executive branch. Yes, Senator, I'm currently I won't even ask since you're sitting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you both uh, for your testimony today. And congratulations again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Senator Cotton. Senator Coons. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman Durbin, and um, welcome uh, to our two nominees who are before this committee today. Um, both of the nominees before us are highly qualified and impressive candidates, and both have demonstrated a commitment to justice and fairness